Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de Lalande. Lalande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. Welcome back to La Lande. Today we have a very strange tour because we're just going to go around little hidden areas that you haven't seen yet, but it's going to be quite bitty, strange little areas here and there. But let's start in the entrance hall because it's here that I'll be able to show you the cellar. This is the room in which we started the very first tour about six weeks ago. I thought maybe the tour would take a couple of videos max, but actually every single week it seems there are still things that you haven't seen, though we're getting a little bit low on new areas now. But many of you want to see the cellar, which is weirdly small. So we're going to go down this door here into the cellar and don't be surprised, it's, it's quite tiny for a chateau. I'm armed with a torch because there's no light down there. And this is a really fun door. It looks like all of the other doors in the room, but when you open it, it's just a fake front. There's just a tiny little door going to the cellar and nothing behind the second door. Right, here we go. It's a bit grubby down here. It's, it's not our realm, it's the realm of the bats. The first part of the cellar is this bit under the stairs. So there you see the underside of our granite staircase and it's solid granite all the way up to the attic, goes up two flights of stairs. And then just around the corner are the stairs going down. Before we go downstairs, I want to show you these shelves. There are holes in all of them. They go right up to the top. There's another few behind me here. And this is where they would store the empty bottles upside down so that they would drain and be dry, ready for making more cider the following year because there are an apple orchard here and they would have made their own cider in the past. And when we arrived, this was absolutely filled with empty bottles. Now, this part is extremely dangerous and is why I have a torch. Here, there's no railing, but you see, it just drops straight down Whereas on this side, there are steps. And when you come in complete darkness, expecting to get onto these steps, it will be very easy to step into nothingness. So we're going to be very careful and go down the stairs. I think if we're ever going to use this cellar more, a few safety features need to be added. At the bottom of the stairs, there's this most mysterious, huge stone basin. We have no idea what it was for. I'm watching my camera woman, Mummy, gingerly come down the stairs now. Yes, do that. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Have you been looking for a small um, fork yes. anywhere, Mummy? Oh, well, it will shouldn't come back have, up with us. Shouldn't have left it last time you were gardening in the cellar. She's full of sand. I think the sand isn't that oh, deep, no. though. No, no, no. Perhaps before a big party, they could have filled that with yes. ice. Or maybe this was an ice room. Maybe they could yes. have stored ice here. Uh, we don't know. If anyone has any ideas what, what this could have been, let us know. I love this stone doorway. You can see that it's a beautifully carved stone door. And there would have been a huge door here because we can see the little hole for a latch. And I think that now we are going into the ancient yes, chateau. I'm sure you're right. Now we can let some light in here because there is a door that goes to the courtyard from here. I'm just going to go and open it. There. Better with a little light. Yes. We don't come down here very often because there are bats in here, but they'll 
be a little bit busier in summer so we won't be waking them up from their hibernation. But this is where the previous owners did keep some of their wine. We found some metal cases for storing wine and we took them up to the room that we use. The doorway to the courtyard would have been very useful in the past as things would have been stored down here, though we don't really use it anymore. And this is the entire extent of Chateau de Lalande's cellars. This arched room, which is very, very old. And these are the openings through which the bats come and go. And we still have one of their cases for wine right at the end. I really like this wine storage device because it is lockable. So if we ever get to the stage of restoration in this chateau where we finish the entire chateau and are then investing in wine, that will be the case that we have to use. See, there are all of the different shelves for wine and then you can shut the grill and lock it. Hmm. There are openings throughout letting in air from outside, which is very important to keep the space from getting damp. There are lots of huge beams on the ground. What are they doing here? They're vast and where do they come from? Because they're certainly not from this ceiling. This is the door, the entrance door, looks the same size. I think that looks about the same size as that opening. And there is another door similar next to it because there's another little cupboard in this room. Shall I open it? Yes, thank you. I don't think there's anything in there. Just a lintel and a space above. It seems that everything that was done here was done with the idea of letting ventilation into the space. It's just a little cupboard with stones. It might come in handy one day. So we keep hoping that when we come down here we'll find some entrance to secret tunnels and exciting discoveries, but really it's quite a small space and we haven't found any tunnels yet. Maybe we need to dig down a little. We're very surprised that the entire old part of the chateau, which is from here this way, doesn't seem to have a cellar. Mm. Let's see if we can see any, any strange anomalies on the wall over there. This is the part that would lead to that wing. But I can't see any areas that have been bricked up afterwards. There is no break in that wall. I can't see any break. I think that there are more discoveries to be made in this room. When we have nothing else to do. <laughs> In the meantime, let's get back to the light. Mummy, I'm going to take this upstairs for you, as we have at least found one treasure in the cellar today. But yeah. do not try to film and come up these stairs at the same time. Stop filming before you come up. They're very dangerous. I wish you could smell it because it really does smell very strongly of bats down here. But now we're going to go out into the fresh air and move from bats to chickens. So now if you ever visit Lalande in person, you will know what secret lies behind this door in the entrance hall. There, we're back to elegance. Now we're going to go back onto the terrace and I would like to show you the area that lies behind the chapel because there's a few tiny buildings there and the old tennis court. It cannot grace the name of tennis court anymore, but maybe one day we'll renovate it. Come this way. This is the terrace where we relax during the day. And this way leads to the chapel. We're going towards the kitchen now. And this is the area that I'd like to show you today. Mummy, I see you mowed the lawn. Yes, yes, and I could not budge from the mower. Our old mower has a faulty battery, which means that if mummy gets stuck here, we can't really get the car round to jump start it. So until the new mower arrives, once she's on the mower, she can't stop. There, of course, is the beautiful chapel of St. Joseph, the jewel of Lalande, which I've shown to you in a previous vlog. This way is the door into the kitchen. So we're going into new territory. This is the window to the laundry room. 
here we have the window to the downstairs loo. This is the room right at the end of the corridor that one day I'm hoping to make into the china pantry for all of the lovely plates and porcelain that we have here. I love this bush, it smells delicious, it's mock orange blossom. This is just the best scent in the garden. We have two huge bushes of it and I love this time of year because of the scent that we get from these. These double doors lead to the wood hanger and to the other courtyard, the stable courtyard, which we saw last week. All of these bushes are lilacs. So you can imagine about a month ago, this was fairyland. There are lilac coloured lilacs and white ones as well. My father had pruned that lilac bush to this height on arrival because it likes to grow very, very tall and only have the flowers along the top, but it's already back to the size that it was in the first place and needs pruning again. Here we have the back of the room that I showed to you last week where the two roosters live. So today they're open on the other side, but sometimes we open this side and they come and go as they please. And this is the window into the room that I would like to make into a gite one day. The one with two levels that I showed you last week. The other half is where the roosters are. But it would be fantastic to have more windows and a lovely gite. This is unbelievable. It's only because we're making this vlog. Just after I had told you what room this was and I walked around the corner, my trusty camera woman, Mummy, suddenly realised that there was an arch here. See? You can see the top stones of an arch. So in fact, it won't be vandalism to change this window. We could put in a huge window in the shape of an arch, maybe with a few stairs, so that the people living in that jeep will be able to have a door straight onto the garden. Well spotted, Mummy! You genius! Let's go round the corner now. And this is the other huge area where we went upstairs and I showed you that there was a door with absolutely no floor behind it on the other side and no balcony on this side. But we will put a floor in. I would love a bedroom up there. I think it would make a beautiful apartment with a lovely Juliet balcony in front of it. And we have that balcony. We just have to do a touch of work in the barn to make it an apartment first. As you can see, this is where we hang the laundry because it's hidden away from the main part of the house. But once there's a lovely Juliette balcony here, we might need to rethink our laundry placement. And now welcome to Lalanne's secret courtyard. Very few guests see this area because the main lawns are to the other side and people go and visit the walled garden because that's obviously where we grow all of our fruit and vegetables. So very few people know about this little courtyard area, which could be glorious one day. On one side, it has our tennis court, which is fairly catastrophic. Because this is not a very pretty fence, along it I've planted honeysuckle, clematis and jasmine all the way along, alternately, in the hope that it covers it one day. And this used to be just a concrete area that we used as a fire pit. And then with a really lovely volunteer who stayed for a very long time, but just before I started making vlogs, so most of you won't know him, called Jamie, we decided to turn this into a little secret pond for ourselves to come to. And we planted all of this vegetation in the pond and there's lots of little fish, but they're very shy. Oh, I can see one here. And look, our water lily is out today. But other than the pond and having started planting a few bits and pieces, we have clearly not touched this area of the garden at all, but I want it to be a magical little courtyard filled with beautiful plants with a very cottagey feel, quite informal, lots of flowers, lots of wisteria. I have planted some wisteria, which is just starting over there. That's the plan for the future. 
our chicken, and I say chicken singular because we only have one, I can hear her, is in here with one of our roosters and they have a run in the vegetable garden. But this is an actual house. There are five eggs. Right, Come in. I can hear them outside. Don't they have the most darling house? They have old ladders to roost on. And then here she has nesting boxes, but she's made herself a nest in the corner, which she likes best. And she lays the most magical blue eggs. It's a very special type of chicken that lays blue eggs. I think she has a Cotswold leg bar, though actually she's only half a Cotswold leg bar, half local chicken, but she kept the ability to make the blue shells. We'll bring them into the kitchen. They have a little window up here. Oh, there she is. There are Myrtle and Catwoman. Strangely, Catwoman is the rooster, but when he was born, he was born in an incubator and he lived in my bathroom and I became very attached to him and I thought he was a chicken, so I named him Catwoman. And just down here is their way in and out to their run. There were three small doors along here because this was originally the chateau's piggery, hence the size of the doors, but we don't keep pigs anymore here. Which leaves us with lots of possibilities for what we'll use them for in future. There's quite a nice little space in here. You'd think from the doors that it was very low, but actually for a family as short as ours, this is fine. But if we took this out, it continues above. The roof slopes up that way and there's another window up there. In this house, we're always talking about possibly one day having a swimming pool. We've been talking about it for 15 years and it's definitely not our first priority. Our priorities are always things like the chapel and the lake, things that have historic significance to the chateau. But obviously one day it would be nice and there's several areas that we're constantly arguing about amongst ourselves as to where we would put a pool. But this little courtyard could be a nice spot for one one day because in this area we could have a sauna, a shower, a loo, there's everything that we need. And then just on the other side, there is an area that we could turn into a little orangerie looking out over the swimming pool. This door leads to the bread oven corridor and this window looks into the bread oven room. So if we did ever make this into a lovely area that we could come to, we could have chairs and tables on this terrace here and have pizza night because we could get everything we need to make our pizzas from the vegetable garden, make them in the bread oven and sit here drinking wine on a summer's evening waiting for our pizzas. When you own a chateau that needs as much work doing to it as this one, you have to get used to living on your dreams in the meantime. <laughs> this is a darling little room, which is just used, well, to store all sorts of things that were just lying around when we bought actually, that we've never properly cleared out. So it is a mess in here, but with more windows, we could make this into a lovely garden room. Very, very crucial things are being stored in here. For example, an antique baby bath. Where would we be without it? Which contains a croquet set and lots of old garden furniture, our barbecues. We should get those out and start using yes, them soon. Should. It's that time of year, finally. And a lot of garden furniture. We have a lot of these lovely old French iron garden chairs. We haven't brought them out yet because, well, there's no bed and breakfast in lockdown. There's only six of us in the house, so we have enough seating out at the moment. But, oh, that one might have to stay like that. No, there we go. We have a very old croquet set here, much nicer than that croquet set, hidden behind some golf clubs. Yes, this croquet set means business. Why don't we do that this weekend, Mummy? Croquet competition on the lawn. Here we have the best, most modern tennis rackets for when we play tennis on the best 
most modern tennis court that we have. The door behind me leads to the corridor where the bread oven room is. It's permanently blocked at the moment, but we could easily reopen it and then people sitting in here could get through to there. It would be nice to open up this whole space as un petit parc de loisirs in the heart of Chateau de la Lande. You know, mummy, the more time we spend here now looking, the more I'm thinking that this is a lovely spot for a pool. This is a lovely, lovely It's place. got sun all the time. Yes. And I like the fact that it would be surrounded by ancient walls and plants. It wouldn't be some stark modern pool. This is lovely. And we could make the swimming pool in these same buttery stone colours, not blue. I just think that would be gorgeous. And if the tennis court was ever redone one day, then we would have all of the things for our guests in one place. Tennis, a pool, a sauna, little jacuzzi maybe. Oh, I can dream anyway. As I look at this collection of slightly dilapidated buildings, I see smoke coming out of that chimney from the wood-fired oven as we make pizzas. I see people lounging on lounges, a beautiful swimming pool, glistening in the sunshine, laughter from people playing tennis on a lovely manicured tennis court and watching over everyone, someone sitting on a Juliet balcony, looking out of that window, waving at us. Shall we go and have a closer look at the tennis court? There's really only one thing that I like about it. This path is the entrance into our woods and the little path over there is the way down towards the stream and the little bridge over the stream. And we have a statue of the goddess Diana, goddess of the hunt, marking the entrance to the woods. We're ready for Wimbledon, or I should say Roland Garros as we're in France. Yes. Unbelievably, my friends do actually use this but it's more like crazy tennis because you never know which way the ball's going to bounce once it hits the ground. It's impossible to predict. This is the only thing that I use in here. This is as close as I get to exercising at La Lande. It just feels right. I am the world's worst umpire though, because I tend to start looking at the scenery because the view from up here is gorgeous and I forget to watch the game. We have the chateau in the distance there, all the rolling countryside around and the woods over to my right and a beautiful view of the world's most intrepid camera woman. <laughs> but sitting here with a cup of tea my friends near me playing a game of crazy tennis and a beautiful view is a very nice way to spend the afternoon. I can tell you right now, wedges are the worst thing you could possibly wear on a ladder. I did not plan to come up here today when I did this. Luckily, it's not very high. So much work to do in this chateau. If you ask me, far nicer than playing tennis is just to stand here and listen to the noise of the woods and the birds. And having seen the tennis court, we're going to go and see the last little building along here, which is another wood hanger. Here it is. It's also known as David's Outdoor Gym. He's moved some of his equipment into one of the barns for the winter. There were all sorts of weights. Oh, there's still some weights on the floor here. And a cycling machine. The wall in front of us is the wall of the vegetable garden. And then we are just surrounded by woodland. For now, this is the perfect place to store our logs and planks that we had made when we had a lot of trees cut down at one point. We had them all made into planks, so in the future we have our own wood for floorboards in the chateau. That will be lovely to see that going into the chateau and taking all of the materials that we need from the land around us. But Michael Potts always has his eye on this structure. He imagines it completely glassed 
and then a perfect multi-purpose space, maybe for yoga, because it's true that yoga here, surrounded just by the trees and the sound of the birds would be rather idyllic. Mummy has made an exciting discovery. Yes, this was the old Giro Broyer we had to go on the tractor. But we've never had the blades for it. I didn't even think about it. You've been asking me to buy a Giro Broyer. Yes, Mummy, anything because for you. Then the past in the forest can be done, you see. Mummy's concern is that even when we get the new mower, which will hopefully be any, be any day now, that. yes, it won't be able to do the very rough grass in these areas. Yes, you're happy. Yeah. Right. Mummy gets happy about things like this machinery working whilst I'm dreaming of yoga studios and glassed woodland houses. Mummy's back back down on earth. Yes. I yes, thank goodness. <laughs> yes, I know you're quite right. So if we have the blades there for this yes. one, we can use it because that belongs to the tractor. Wonderful, let's get it done. Oh, we've made a good decision. I think I fell down a rabbit hole. <laughs> no, what, you know, I've been looking for this for ages. You're joking. No, I have we found two tools today and we found the machine for the back of the tractor, though it will need new blades. Good day. Do you know what we need now, Mummy? A cup of tea. And a piece of banana cake. Shall we go and sit and have that on the terrace? Oh, nice. And there's home and tea and cake. Oh, Mummy, I love this little path that you've mown just through this grass. It's pretty. <laughs> Yes, I, I love to pass through high grass. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> you forgot what language we speak in for a moment. <laughs> well, Mummy, you deserve this. You thank are you. a great videographer. Thank you oh, for thank doing you. this. Well, thank you for inviting me to tea. Well, thank you also for making the banana cake that we're having in our tea. Yes. Mm. I love your banana cake. Thank you for joining us on today's tour. Next week I'll carry on showing you more secrets of La Lande because we've still got a couple of areas up our sleeve. But my next video will be on Sunday and it's going to be a visit to a local garden that is so beautiful it's in the big Vogue book of beautiful gardens and homes around the world. So I hope you enjoy joining us then and in the meantime have a wonderful weekend. See you soon. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Mackies and Mackies of Lalande. Alice Allen, Daniela Dan Banda, Danelle Banakovic, Jason and Valerie Best, Veronica Castillo, Laura Damare, Sakura Dennis, Dotty, Anna Farmery, Caroline Furster, Brenda Gibbons, Brenda Harris, Anthony Hindmarsh, Laure Ukir, Yedelund, Pauline Johnston, Jimmy Kemp, Shannon Maitland, JC O'Ward, Maureen Palmer, Bettina Rojek, Barbara Schmelzer, Sven Schreiber, Patty Suhu, Sarah Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Brian Woodward, and David Young. And thank you to all of you.